Yes. Depending where, which side of the world are you listening? Buenos dias, buenas tardes, hello, good afternoon. Uh, as I mentioned before in our general webinar for Argentina, today we'll be doing it in Spanish so you can practice. <laughs> so, so it's a joke, sorry. So we will be doing today a general uh, webinar about a particular area in Patagonia, in Calafate. And um, welcome everybody. Uh, this is our second um, cycle of webinars. And uh, today we will be doing Calafate, Torres del Paine, and also uh, El Chalten. So we'll try to explain all these uh, beautiful areas that we have in this area. We are still admitting a few more people, but in the meantime, I will start with a short video that um, you can be uh, watching of the areas that we will discover today in El Calafate, some of these great navigators. Welcome everybody again. Uh, my name is Juan Jose and I'm in charge of the US market, uh, all, most of the English speaking markets in Eurotour at the sales and commercial department. Um, today we'll be doing a webinar, a presentation about El Calafate, Torres del Paine and El Chalten. And uh, these are one of my favorite places in Argentina, Patagonia, the southern part of Patagonia. So we'll let, let you know and, uh, how to combine Argentina with this with Chile in this part of the world. Um, and, uh, I just came from this area two months ago, no, last month, and uh, it was, had a great time. Uh, before we start, uh, Argentina, unfortunately, we are still with our borders closed. We are still waiting for official news to open our borders for all, all the different markets. We are closed for everybody. Uh, we had a soft opening last December to Chile, Brazil, and all the neighbor countries, and then we closed them back again with the second variation. Uh, we had a good uh, amount of vaccinated people, but uh, still uh, it's coming a bit slow. And we are having a second wave here. So we are hoping that uh, for the next season in November, we we'll, might be opening our borders again in, our, in Argentina and hope to have a, a, a good uh, high season for, for this area that in particular in Patagonia is very good to visit in starting in November. Um, this is uh, one of my favorite areas in Argentina and uh, 
for for this part of the of the time that we are suffering the COVID, uh, it's great opportunity for you to discover in uh, with only two flights you can discover three three areas. So that's something that is going to be important to mention to your passengers that you can discover three destinations with only two flights coming from Buenos Aires all the way to Calafate, and then you can visit El, El Chilean side and, and Torres del Paine. Before we start, Eurotour has been 67 years in the market, a long time. Uh, I don't look uh, 67, <laughs> but uh, we have been uh, doing this a long time and we are very well uh, um, company DMC based in, in Buenos Aires, our head office. And we have offices in Patagonia here in Calafate, in Ushuaia, and we open in Salta. Uh, this gives us a very good opportunity to operate all the services, very good personal service, we control all the services and, and uh, this is something that uh, we have a good advantage of, of having these uh, local offices in all these places. Um, to have uh, all our staff are very well trained and educated about all these areas. So now we'll start with a different um, um, the visits of this beautiful area, the El Calafate, we'll start with El Calafate land of glaciers. We arrive in El Calafate FTE, the airport code from Buenos Aires. Uh, most of the flights here in Argentina goes from Buenos Aires, AEP from the domestic airport, and we land in FTE El Calafate. Then if uh, people are coming from Chile, there are different ways to combine. Like if you're flying from Santiago de Chile, you land in either Puerto Natales or in Punta Arenas. There's two more airports in this area that you can use for entering into this area. Um, uh, in the past, we used to go via Rio Gallegos. Now having the direct airport in El Calafate is much easier. Uh, we save around four hours driving from Rio Gallegos to El Calafate. Um, so we are about, uh, in El Calafate, we are about one hour and 90 kilometers from the main attraction that is the Perito Moreno Glacier, like what you see here in my back. Uh, we are about uh, three hours driving to El Chalten. Uh, that will be up here, up here in, in Lago Vietna. And uh, Torres del Paine in, in a straight line, it's also about four, uh, five hours driving, but we'll see later how to combine these two areas. And the same distance to Puerto Natales will be around five hours. So three hours and a half is the flight time to from Buenos Aires. We land in Calafate and we start this is, will be the gateway, the starting point for most of the itineraries in this glacier, uh, land of glaciers. Yeah, this area, we, the main reason that we go here is to have beautiful uh, views of the different glaciers. Remember that we have all the continental ice field here in between Argentina and Chile. So there are more than 50 glaciers falling into the two sides, into Argentina and into Chile. And, um, beautiful places for doing trekking, horseback riding, and uh, different also outdoor activities that you can do in, in depending where you go and the season that you go. It's something that, uh, that you can discover uh, in this area. Today we'll start and we'll, I will try to explain more about what to do in Calafate first, and uh, I will divide the presentation in two. This will be the first part, concentrating near the Perito Moreno area. And then we will discover all this part of the lake uh, that we will offer different navigations, different boat rides that we have in the, in the northern part of the lake of Lago Argentino with different brand uh, arms that we have in the lake. So um, let's start now with, El Calafa, uh, with uh, the part of uh, Perito Moreno. Here is the Peninsula Magallanes that we visit is, as I, I mentioned in the beginning from El Calafate, one hour drive and we get to the famous Perito Moreno Glacier. Um, now, uh, uh, today we'll be doing, uh, uh, I will be showing this, this uh, main tours that we have, the classic tours in El Calafate, the mini trek in the big eyes, the different walks that we have in the, in the walking path. And um, sorry about the sun, there's a construction near my house <laughs> and, uh, and the different navigations. And um, so we'll start with the Perito Moreno. Of course, this is a start. The, the main attraction of this area, the Perito Moreno, is something that everybody has to see. But we have different ways to see the Perito Moreno. Yeah? Um, 
this is one of the the, um, uh, uh, the the only glacier in the area that is not melting. You know that most of the glaciers in this area are melting, are losing a lot of uh, their, their, their size. And uh, the Perito Moreno uh, characteristic is that they are earning and it's, it's in a good balance of, of earning and losing in the same, in the same way. So it's uh, one of uh, the most important characteristics that, uh, and also the access. It's very, you can access and get into this kind of walking paths uh, to see the front wall of the Perito Moreno. So this is very, very uh, unique glacier in the area because the access that you have, it's, it's amazing. In, in one hour from El Calafate, you are in this balcony and in this, in front of this incredible wall. And uh, this is 80 meters wall. And all the time it's uh, falling pieces of ice. It's um, making huge cracking noise. And it's, it's something that I, I love every time I go here, it's, uh, uh, I, I get emotion. And uh, so it's, remember that uh, the, the ice, we only see it uh, 10 or 20 percent of the of the of the ice. Then to to in the total, it's around 200 meters the the wall. So 80 meters is what we see. Um, and uh, here is where in this map we, we can see the different balconies that we have in the when we get into the national park. So we have different balconies depending the um, the difficulty. Some are are ac have access for wheelchair passengers. So we can um, uh, suggest, normally we spend around three hours in, in the walking paths uh, and our guides give a good introduction to the area and we stay uh, walking in the different paths. I do recommend the central one and, the, and this one, the blue one, uh, getting to the, you can walk all the way to the restaurant. There's a beautiful restaurant called Nativos with a great view of the glacier here. So we normally spend, uh, I never want to leave this area. We normally have here uh, three hours, but every time, the minute you turn around, you're hearing uh, this cracking noise of the glacier and it's uh, falling pieces of ice and, and making a huge uh, noise. So the walking paths are all renovated, very good. And the, the, uh, the glacier can be visited all year round. Remember, most of you might be on the Northern hemisphere. Uh, we are all, opposite to you in the southern hemisphere. Now we are in autumn. We are starting our winter in June, July. And um, so normally in the past, uh, Calafate has been a, a, an area that has been, been selling in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the summertime from November to April. But now there are a lot of activities that remain open, like hotels remain open and are also um, available to visit all year round in winter. Also you, also you can visit the Perito Moreno. Uh, so in July, August, we are in our winter time and you can visit this time, this time of the year, it's less windy. So that's some, something very important for you to visit the Perito Moreno in winter. This, uh, if it's a sunny day, it's, uh, it's beautiful to be outside and, and uh, just not, it, I mean, you get uh, snow, it's cold, but it's not a, uh, something that you don't feel. Actually, in summertime, you have to be prepared for all weathers. Yeah, it's uh, Patagonia, it's always like that. Sometimes you live in the, ho in the hotel freezing and in, uh, during the, by noon, you're taking out your jacket. So you have to be prepared for all kinds of climates in one day, even in summertime. Um, this is something that I wanted to show. This is a very particular moment uh, that uh, every four or five years, it depends on, on the weather conditions. Of, this has been changing a lot. In the past, it was every four years that uh, the glacier was pushing into the continent here, creating a dam. And here, this side of the lake was pushing this side. So create, uh, what happened is that they create a... a, a a very a lot of pressure and uh, create and, and break a big wall that we have here in the in the Perito Moreno, making a huge cracking. This is something and uh, spectacular to see. It's uh, something that is very difficult to predict and to say when it's going to happen. We know when the dam is blocked and when the water level grows on the other side of the lake on the Brazo Rico, but we never know when it's going to be the big cracking. So uh, the, last, uh, the last one was at night, so nobody could see in, in this. And uh, so we are, it was a, not a good timing for, for photographers, <laughs> but uh, um, 
it's it's something incredible to 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 really look at this uh, picture of the big breaking. But if you don't see this all the time, the the the, um, the glacier is is falling pieces of ice and making an incredible noise and and, and uh, huge uh, cracking noise. So another thing that we do recommend in the area is uh, visiting the nautical safari, to, taking this boat ride. Uh, we know we go to this port that is called Bahia la, Bajo las Sombras, and uh, we navigate from here to the front wall. There are two navigations, either the nautical safari or the Moreno Spirit that we can take in the other side of the lake. But basically, both, both are navigations to see the front wall of the Perito Moreno. So it's a good combination after having been walking in the walking paths. Uh, it's a good combination to take this kind of boats to have a different perspective of the of the glacier. Yeah? This is the same company that operates also the uh, this important tour um, tour that it's the mini trekking and the big eyes. Um, this on this on this map we can see the the previous picture the Safari Nautico that is the navigation that takes you like the what you see, you see here on the red uh, line, you see the front wall. Uh, but if you take this blue um, boat, you disembark in the other side, we walk through the forest, we put the ground ponds, and this is uh, the mini trekking. We put the ground ponds and we walk on the ice. This is something unbelievable. For me, mini trekking is a very complete tour. It's very um, important and, and I would say it's a, uh, very complete because what it what they do it's a combination of uh, ice trekking and also they also visit the pet, the, the walking path in the Perito Moreno so it's a great combination of be, of visiting the glacier from two perspectives from two sides um, also the same company operates uh, for more adventure passengers the big ice the big ice they spend more time in the ice so this will be around two hours one hour 40 in the ice. And this uh, longer uh, walk, it's for people who that are more prepared and uh, to walk in, in more soft adventure. And um, also they, you spend around almost four hours, three hours and a half in the ice. So it's a longer, longer walk in the, in the ice. But both, both the mini trekking and the big ice, the concept is the same. We cross the, the by boat from by, bajo, por, bajo, Puerto Bajo Las Sombras up to the refuge. In these two tours, we need to bring a box lunch. Remember that in the Perito Moreno, we can either bring a box lunch or we, have a, we can have the Nativos restaurant for um, a proper menu sitting in a, in, a, in a proper restaurant or also the same restaurant offers uh, some snacks if you didn't, if you forgot to bring your box lunch. But here, the, you need to bring your box lunch. Yeah, so this is the mini, the mini trekking. Uh, in, they have some eight restrictions. Doesn't matter if your passengers are very fit. We have been requested a lot of time people that are on the 67s and they are very fit and they want to do this. They have been climbing the, I don't know, the Himalayas and they want to do this, but the, there's a strict policy because of the insurance and they don't allow it. Actually, this is a very demanding, demanding um, tour. So we need to have your passport in advance to confirm it. So in the past, before COVID, now we hope it's going to be also a, a good season. In the past, it was a very high demanded uh, tour and uh, we needed to, to, to make the reservation, we needed to have the passport copies. Yeah? It's a um, uh, beautiful tour, but it's a uh, very high demand also you uh, walk through uh, on the, with these grampons on the ice and then you end up here. These are the grampons that you put. And then uh, this is a, the boat where you disembark, where you can put, uh, where you can have the, the box lunch that you bring. Remember the, that you need to bring the box lunch. And these are some pictures of the big ice. And the big ice has um, even a stronger limit, limitation of the age restriction. It's uh, up to 50, past 50 years old that you can uh, take these big eyes. And uh, actual, also the seasons, the seasons is from October to April and the other in the, the mini trekking operates a longer season. These things might be changing after COVID, we don't know. Also the, the capacity of each of the boats that we will be do, looking today might be changing, uh, so we don't know uh, 
the capacity limitations that the national park will put to in this area. Um, the big eyes, it's an, an amazing, but it's for more people, people who want to do more adventure kind of a program. Yeah, it's a, something unbelievable. Look at the colors of the lagoons. And we end up with a whiskey on the rock so we can celebrate a, in the end of the, of the mini trekking with a, some whiskey with a pieces of ice, real, real ice. <laughs> This is something um, for me that I love. It's a kayak experience. It's also, they have some limitation of age restrictions and they don't operate in the, in the winter time. The, the um, concept of this tour is also operating in the Perito Moreno area. So we go into the same area where we started in, in the, to see the Perito Moreno in the classic way, but we uh, have a lecture of how to row in this area and uh, we start rowing and we, don't get very, very close to the wall because that might be very dangerous, but uh, we keep a distance to see the glaciers, but it's an incredible view from the kayaks and uh, very uh, energetic <laughs> um, self-adventure tour that we offer. Um, one tour that I love and that might be also very good during COVID times because the, the capacity of this tour is the South, South Glacier Pioneer. It's a full day tour. It operates on, only in the summertime, in our, our summertime. So it's from September to May. And uh, the capacity of this tour, it's uh, only 15 to 20 passengers. So it's a very small operation. And that probably during COVID times might be a good, uh, a great way to, to put your passengers and to have them on a small basis, on a small group basis. Um, what it have this tour is that we came from Calafate through the old road of the Estancias. We have lunch in the Nive Poike Estancia, and then we start navigation and a short navigation from through here. We have a little walk, a, a trekking here. Then we visit the Perito Moreno uh, from the water, and then we go to Bajo las Sombras. Then we take a, we continue by land. We visit the Perito Moreno. Um, from the ba same balconies that we visit on a classic way, and we return to Calafate on a different way. Yeah? So it's a very complete tour. And what happens with this tour is that they get into the national park uh, opposite time to most of the regular tours. So it, they get a, after 3 p.m. when most of the tourists have been going out of the national park. This is also something very important that we, in, uh, having our own office in Calafate, we have been trying to design the tours, the regular tour for visiting the Perito Moreno, trying to avoid the crowds with the COVID times. We are trying to go either very early in the morning or try to go or, or, or in the afternoon to avoid the crowds or the, we don't know how next season and the next seasons are going to, are going to come if there are going to be a lot of people here or not, but uh, we are thinking of avoiding crowds in, with this way, uh, visiting the Perito Moreno on a different time zone, on a different, uh, uh, avoiding the crowds. So the, um, so the South Glacier, it's a, for me, it's a very, very good um, uh, excursion, very exclusive, up to 15 passengers. So it's, uh, they have this small soft trekking um, and also they visit the Perito Moreno. So it's another way to see the Perito Moreno in a, in a from a different perspective, from a different point of view. Another, another option that we have is the Major Moreno Trek. Um, this tour is operating a, in a remote area of the national park that nobody else goes. So we come from El Calafate, we get up to Puerto, Puerto Bandera where most of the navigations are starting and we'll show you later on, on another map. And we take a boat through, uh, this is the only company operating in this area that is visiting the Cerro Negro de Vallatoro and uh, visiting the, the Mayo Glacier. But also after doing a trekking in that area, they come and visit the Glacier Perito Moreno and they disembark here and then re they return to Puerto Bandera by, by boat and return to Calafate. So it's another way to, to have both things, the uh, trekking in one area that it's uh, off the beaten track and it's uh, very unique um, this boat has a smaller capacity than the other navigations in the, in the, in the area. So we have been looking of different options of visiting the Perito Moreno Glacier. We have been talking about the classic way, the full day Perito Moreno, visiting the front wall. 
having the two navigations, number one here with the Safari Nautico or the Moreno Spirit, or the two, the mini trekking, the big eyes, or we can also offer the uh, South, um, um, South Pioneer route that we, we have been explaining number six here, coming through the Estancias and visiting the Perito Moreno. So there are different ways to see the Perito Moreno. Of course, you need to select one of them because most, I mean, some of these tours will be repeating the, the main attraction, the Perito Moreno. So depending on your passenger, you will need to decide which, which one they will like. Uh, if you want to go on a classic way and visit just the, the front wall uh, from the walking path or taking the, the, um, the little boat or there are different combinations that you can take. Yeah? There, are, there are many options to see the same Perito Moreno, but that, as this is the main uh, star uh, in the area, it's uh, good to, to have these different options. Now I'll, I will show you the different uh, navigations. We have the old glaciers is the main uh, classic uh, navigation. This is another full day activity. So remember uh, the Perito Moreno are all full day activities. Now these navigations are also full day. That's why we always recommend three nights in the area. So three nights for uh, in El Calafate are the, the ideal stay in, in this area to include this kind of navigations, uh, to, to include these two full days, the navigation and the Perito Moreno. Um, so we all have the old glacier, the Gourmet uh, experience, and uh, different activities also in the Estancia Cristina that we'll, I will explain later. The old glacier is a classic um, boat ride that uh, for the first time last season, they started to stop and they are now, they are now operating uh, with a stop in Pegasini um, Glacier to have the opportunity. In the past, they didn't disembark in any point. It was just a round trip by boat and you remain all day in boat. Now they disembark in a restaurant in Pegasini with a view of the glacier, so it's nice. And uh, so this is the how we, they navigate. So from El Calafate, remember, we always take one uh, 40 minutes uh, ride by land to Puerto Bandera. Here is the same port that all the different navigations are using. All the navigations are using this uh, port, Puerto Bandera. And, um, we start navigating through here. What is what it happened in the past is this uh, is the arm of the Uppsala glacier. Now we, uh, this glacier has been unfortunately has been melting and losing like ten kilometers of their front wall. And any of the of the companies of the boat rides can enter into this part because they are full of icebergs, and they are that are blocking us. So no no boat ride can enter into this part of the channel. So all what they see is the glacier, the Uppsala glacier from here. It's a far away view, but except the Estancia Cristina that I will mention later, that has a great view of the Uppsala glacier. But they enter, these old glaciers enter into here. They have a stop here in this new restaurant with a, few, with a view to the, um, the Spegasini glacier that is also amazing. And it's a glacier falling into the lake also. And, and then after lunch, they return into El Calafate. This uh, excursion gives you the possibility if you, in the high season, there's a few flights leaving out of Calafate late, like at seven or 8 p.m. This navigation leave you, give you an opportunity if you want to take off a flight uh, late at night because it's, it, it brings you back at four or 5 p.m. in the afternoon to Calafate. Um, St we still recommend that three nights uh, to have a relaxing area in, in El Calafate. But uh, uh, other tours that we have are uh, the Gourmet Experience and the Estancia Cristina. And now I'm going to explain all of this. So this is all glaciers. This is in the Spegasini. And this is the Glacier Gourmet. The Glacier Gourmet has a, a box lunch in, on board um, included. And this is the glacier that uh, then the, an excursion that they include um, also the Perito Moreno view from the same boat. It's a very speed boat. So they have included the Perito Moreno visit as well. And what they do, for, it might be for a passenger who are limited with time and they want to do all in like a full day. It's kind of too much, too much for one day, but they visit the Pegasini and they visit the Perito Moreno in one same day. So might be a, a good way to, for those passengers who are in a rush and maybe have 
limited time, maybe with two nights, you can do this, this and have a complete view of all the area. Um, they used to have um, uh, a, a VIP sector in the back, but we are not sure if they will open after COVID because of these uh, restrictions of uh, space limitations. So we, we don't know if they are going to open the VIP sector. In the VIP sector, they used to have a proper menu with a top, top deluxe, uh, their own chef, uh, wines included and everything. So it, this was a much better um, category. And now the, I will explain the Estancia Cristina. Estancia Cristina, it's a beautiful Estancia located in the lake. The only way we, need, we access into this Estancia is by boat. So we take the full day um, into this area. This um, cruise, when we visit the, the Estancia, we go and see the, the icebergs, uh, floating icebergs of the Uppsala Glacier. We don't enter into Spegasini, but we spend more time in the Estancia. So what we do is uh, living from El Calafate by land, same port. We uh, start our navigation from Puerto Banderas up to here. We see the glacier from here. And instead of going to Spegasini, we go into this other side of the lake and we uh, disembark in an Estancia. An Estancia is the ranch. Remember the gauchos that I mentioned? If you have been on my previous presentation about the ranches of Argentina, the gauchos, uh, the Estancias are the typical ranches. And uh, this was one of the pioneers Estancias in the area. So it was a very, it's a very traditional Estancia. Also they operate as a all-inclusive lodge. So for passengers who are looking more <clears throat> options to stay in a proper estancia, they can stay overnight in this, in this place. Now, this estancia has three, for day activity, full day activities, they have three um, programs. The classic that I don't recommend that much because this is a, probably too much for, uh, I mean, you don't have a lot of activities when you do this. I prefer this kind of uh, uh, full day that is the discovery. The discovery includes these vehicles that you go all the way up to the mountain and you have this incredible view of the Uppsala Glacier. Remember I told you this is the only way to see the Uppsala Glacier and it has an amazing, amazing, incredible view of this glacier. Um, in the past, the glacier was up to here, up to where these people are. Now it melted all the way up to wh where you can see it and, and it's, it lost a lot of, lot of the front wall of the glacier. So, um, but still it has an incredible view. So, if you are sending people to Estancia Cristina, better than the classic, I would do recommend this discovery option that we have possibility of taking the, the boat ride, the, the, sorry, the, the, the boat to get to Estancia, then the ride, the uh, jib to the top of the mountain and uh, have this view. Then you return to the Estancia and you have lunch, typical barbecue lunch, or you can bring your own box lunch if you don't want to pay for the included, uh, um, barbecue lunch, but these are all things that you need to pre-book in advance. So in, when you book your passengers into these programs, you have to select one of these programs, uh, the discovery with lunch or without lunch or the Estancia Cristina trekking, that is another option. This is more for passengers who are wanting to do some active tour. Uh, for this option, they don't have time to have the barbecue in the Estancia, so they are spending all day trekking, uh, it's about uh, 10 kilometers that you trek, and some medium to high uh, difficulty, um, and you have to bring your own box lunch to that part of the, of the trekking. It's an amazing, I have done it and it's amazing to, to, because also you visit the same view of the discovery, the, the view of the Uppsala Glacier. You start in that point and then you return through, uh, through the canyons and it's an amazing uh, trekking option in the in the area. The horseback riding, I mean, it's okay, but you have shorter horseback ridings near Calafate. If you are spending all day visiting this Estancia, I would prefer more the discovery uh, or the um, trekking than the horseback riding, because if you spend all day ho horseback riding, probably it's a great uh, activity to do when you spend overnight. As I was mentioning, this Estancia offer accommodation. So when you do, stay in the stance, you have extra time to have these kind of uh, um, options like horseback riding or extra trekking in the stance or visiting the museum. They have a little museum. So this is a good 
place to relax and to discover the real estancias of Patagonia. This is a, an amazing, very high-end, good, good category of the, of the rooms. Um, so it's a great opportunity to, to visit an estancia and to stay overnight. Now I would like to mention uh, the Santa Cruz has um, two different programs staying overnight in the, in the water. There's a cruise that you can stay in the, in the lake visiting different glaciers, the same glaciers that we have been doing in the Perito Moreno and the Spegazzini, all the glaciers in the area, but you stay overnight in, the, in those areas. So that's, this is an amazing experience, very upscale for also for passengers who have a good uh, budget and you disembark in different parts of the lake. So you disembark in Puesto de las Vacas, we spend the night overlooking a, a glacier. It's a, uh, an exclusive um, cruise of less than 12 or 15 cabins, depending on the boat that they use, but uh, they, they are uh, all inclusive, all the meals are included and uh, it's an, a great experience. They have these zodiacs for disembarking and uh, being in the water, it's an amazing experience too. So this could be a replacement to the hotels in the Calafate area. So you can do the two nights in the, in the lake and the flights allow you to enter uh, and go, get into this program. But most of the passengers always want to do an extra night in Calafate to visit either Calafate and El Salten or combine with the other area. Um, so look at some of the pictures that we have from this uh, staying in this program. Here is a map showing all the navigations that we have been discussing. So I was mentioning the old glaciers, the gourmet experience, the spirits of the glaciers staying overnight in this uh, little boat, and the Estancia Cristina with the three programs that I mentioned, the four programs I mentioned, yeah? So these are all the different navigations and they are full day activities. That's why I do still recommend the three nights in the area, the full day Perito Moreno with all the options that we saw today and the navigation to uh, the different areas. Now, I'll mention some other um, tours that we have in the area. Half day tours, if you have passenger arriving on an early flight or a late flight, or living on a late flight, they have half day activities such as the Glaciarium, very good uh, for your passengers to visit and understand the Glaciarium and the uh, Glaciology to, to understand more about the, what's happening in the area with all the continental ice and um, it explains you about the formation of the glacier, well, a lot of history. Uh, Nativo, for people who want to do uh, photography tours, it's incredible to see the step. Uh, this, to visit, you visit a lot of, you see a lot of these uh, birds and guanacos. Guanacos is a typical the llama, the llama of, our, of uh, this area. It's the cousin of the llama. Um, Nativo experience is also a great experience to, to visit some caves. Also, we have, if you do it, uh, you can do it in the uh, afternoon or sorry, in the, for lunch or for dinner. They include a meal at the, inside of a cave. So if you go also at night, it's a great opportunity to see the stars from this area. You are going away of the city of El Calafate with a great view of the lake, uh, Lago Argentino. So it's a very good experience. Also Nive Poike that I mentioned on the Southern uh, um, Pioneers uh, tour that we visit this estancia. Also we can stay overnight in Nive Poike or we can do a day trip to this estancia. It's a traditional working estancia. So you are in contact with the gauchos and uh, you have the possibility to do this uh, sheer, uh, ship sharing. And um, also they have great horseback programs, getting into the mountain. You stay overnight in little refuges. That's for more people who want to do remote areas or get more involved with the nature and the gaucho style. Um, you have a beautiful program of staying like two or three nights in the mountain, staying overnight in refuges. Now, another option that we have in the area is to visit the Southern South Glacier Adventure for people who don't want to go all the way to do trekking in El Chalten. They can do trekking in near Calafate. And this is also going, the same company operating the Pioneers that we go through the Nive Poike, but we don't have lunch in here. We take a boat and we get into this area that nobody else goes here. So it's also for passengers who are looking something different, getting remote, into remote areas that uh, nobody else is, is visiting this place. 
So it's also very important for a small operation, 15, 20 passengers, small groups. We use this zodiacs in one part of the lake. It's a trekking, trekking and we get into an amazing glacier of, of in the area. Um, that is something that nobody else does. Now, another option is the half day tour to, to do some kayaking in Darwin experience in El Calafate, near Calafate, 30 minutes out of El Calafate. We have this barbecue uh, at the end of the, of the kayaking, or we can take some bike rides um, or trekking options. There are different, different options in El Calafate to do this uh, trekking like the canyons or, or mountain bikes or horseback riding. Um, Local gastronomy, as I was mentioning, barbecue, the lamb barbecue is amazing here to have it with a typical Argentinian Malbec wine from Mendoza. Uh, and so it's an amazing um, option to have this area. The lamb, it's something unbelievable. No vegetarians. <laughs> so El Chalten, now I will go for El Chalten. We use the same airport to get into El Chalten. We land in El Calafate. We stay two, three nights in Calafate, and then we combine it with uh, El Chalten, we get in, uh, on the way to El Chalten, we have petrified forest to visit in La Leona. So we can combine it either on a private basis or on a regular basis, we can comb combine it on the way to El Chalten and visit this petrified forest. Um, and we get to this amazing place that is the uh, El Chalten, that is a trekking destination. So people who, who are coming here, they need to understand that they will be, uh, be doing trekking. So it's three hours to get from El Calafate to El Chalten. Normally this, this town, it's better in our summer time. So from October to March, April, it's an amazing time. If you go in April, you get all red colors, yellows. It's an amazing um, uh, landscape. Remember that it's less windy in winter. So we are uh, visiting this place in, in winter. Uh, in Calafate, you can do uh, in winter, and El Chalten, I would don't recommend in, in winter time because all the all the trekking walking paths can be you get, you get snow in the in the area. Rio de las Vueltas from a lookout point. Here we get uh, in, in and we have different trekking possibilities. So Mirador de los Condores could be a half day a short trekking that we can do um, for those passengers who are don't want to go to the high de high uh, demand. Um, trekkings, they can do this one, or they can also do the Chorrillo del Salto. There are easy, easy trekkings. I don't recommend to visit El Chalten as a day trip. This might be too long because while all the time you spend like six hours, three hours uh, from El Calafate to El Chalten and, and three hours back. So you spend very short time in El Chalten to do some trekking. So probably you have the possibility to do a Chorrillo del Salto or visit other things. But in general, I would prefer to stay two or three nights in this area. It's much nicer to enjoy the trekkings that you have, the possibility of trekkings that you have in this area. Yeah, there are different kind of uh, levels of trekkings, Laguna Capri, four, five hours, and you have an incredible view from a lake to see this uh, amazing view of the, of the Fitzroy, which is the main mountain in this area. Uh, also, you can have the Laguna Torre, which is uh, 18 kilometers, but it's not that high uh, uh, elevation that you climb. So it's not that hard. We say that it's a medium um, difficulty trekking to get to this amazing view of the Laguna Torre. And another option that we offer here is Laguna Los Tres. This is high demand, uh, especially the last hour. It's a very deep, um, uh, part that we need to, to walk to do the trekking. And there are different ways to combine this, um, this trekking, either full day trekking back and forth from El Chalten, or you can go to El Pilar. And uh, like here from El Chalten, you go to El Pilar and you return via Point Senate to see the Laguna de los Tres here. So there are different ways to combine the same um, Laguna de los Tres uh, trekking. Um, here we have an amazing view of Laguna Madre and Inja. So it's, it's uh, for me, uh, um, a must uh, to trekking in, in the area, the Laguna de los Tres. It's, everybody's doing this, uh, this one or Laguna Capi at least. 
that uh, you have this great panoramic view. Also the Pliegue Tumbado, I have done it in last, last month and uh, it's very exhausting. It's very high, you get like uh, 800 meters uh, elevation. So it, you start all the four, first four hours, you're walking all the way up and up and up and you never end. But once you get to the top, you had a great view of the, all the massive of the Fitzroy, the Laguna Torre, you see all the different mountains of the area. So it's a, something for cloudy days could be because you have a different perspective or the, um, or for, for, uh, com, uh, or for doing on a third day uh, trekking in this area. Laguna Pie de Tumbado. And another one that I love is this Adventure Cagliero. Uh, it's an ice trekking. It's the only ice trekking that we have in this area. The, um, I, the Cagliero Glacier, you need to walk through the forest and you get to Laguna to uh, sort of to reserve Los Huemules. And inside the reserve of Humulis is a, a private reserve. So nobody else enter unless you are getting into this area or there are two other projects in, inside La, in Reserva Los Humulis. So it's uh, an area that is still very pristine. Nobody, um, very, very few passengers are, are getting into these uh, trekkings, into these uh, um, trails. So we can visit uh, uh, this place, uh, Cagliero Glacier that is inside here. We walk first uh, two hours through a forest, then we do the, the um, Via Ferrata, which is putting your, or your arness, and you climb like with this kind of ropes. And uh, you, we, we get into the glacier, we put grampons, and we walk in the ice in the grampons. Yeah, this is uh, me uh, about a month ago doing the, this Cagliero uh, Glacier, and it's an amazing experience, but it's high difficulty. I mean, it's for not for every passenger, um, maybe for a passenger who are more fit or, or, the, or those who are already be done the classic tours to in the top 10. Um, another possibility is to do Puesto Cagliero on overnight near the glacier of, of Cagliero. So in front of the glacier, we have this uh, Puesto Cagliero. It's a refuge that you, we can stay overnight right there, right in front of the glacier. So we can uh, access much easier from here instead of doing the long full day from El Chalten, which is a 10 hours tote in total. It's a long day. Um, other activities that we offer in, uh, are the kayak experiences in Laguna El Condor, uh, in different difficulties in this area, or we can take a boat ride in the Lago del Desierto. Re remember Lago del Desierto is uh, on the very close to Chile. So we start a boat ride here and we can take it to the other end to, to get to Chile, or in the middle, we can do two stops, one to visit the Vestignani uh, Glacier, or um, we can also use the boat rides to enter to this famous Aguas Arriba Lodge that is an incredible, an incredible lodge located very remote. Nobody else has access to here. So passengers, only five rooms or six rooms that they have, the passengers staying here are, are in a remote area away from El Chalten. So you need to combine it with El Chalten or with El Calafate to see the classic uh, um, visits. So, but here you all can do different trekkings, not the, not the, the typical Fitzroy, the, the Laguna de los Tres, but you do have other, other kind of uh, trekkings in this area of Aguas Arriba. So you can reach by boat or by trekking. So this is an amazing place to stay overnight. Look at the views that you have in this area. Um, another new program, new accommodation in El Chalten is Chalten Camp, a glamping, a glamping that we have here. I also stayed here and seen an amazing view of the Fitzroy. Um, it was my first experience of glamping and uh, I, I was very happy about this. It's an, uh, an amazing way to get in contact with nature and to, to uh, you're staying like in a uh, tent, but it's a deluxe tent with all shower, proper shower, toilets and everything. And they have a great uh, domo for all the meals. So we, you can have dinner in the, in the, in this place in a different domo. So you have uh, all meals included and, and it's an amazing experience. Also another news that we have is that the Explorer is opening in this area. We don't know, I mean, because of some kind of virus that we have in the world, they have been delaying the opening of this uh, um, lodge and we don't know when 
probably they will they might open for next season but uh, they have been delaying the opening it used to be open it should should be open uh, last september but now they are still waiting to see when when they might open it's all finished they are only only working on the last details and they will have like all explorers like the one in pioneer and the one in in peru they have one in atacama they have all uh, inclusive programs in in their menu look at the rooms inside they are beautiful but the concept is more to focus on the activities and the experience that that you get staying in these places more than the uh, a deluxe accommodation in the area other estancias in the area we have many estancia housing for it's located in Viedma uh, lake with a great view of Fitzroy but there are other estancias remember uh, estancias we have in all Argentina so uh, we have uh, this is housing for we have a uh, in Condor, we have La um, Maipú. Well, there in Patagonia, we have a lot of options to stay in an estancia to get more in contact with the nature and to have uh, access to remote areas uh, in the area. So now I will go to El Chalten, to Torres del Paine, sorry, and uh, how to combine El Calafate with Argentina with the Torres del Paine. We are only two uh, hundred and sixty kilometers from El Calafate to. Um, uh, Torres del Paine and um, and 300 kilometers to Punta Arena. So there's different ways to combine El Calafate to Torres del Paine. You can go in a straight way um, using a private basis, or or you can take a regular bus from daily activity from daily basis from El Calafate to Puerto Natales and combine it with the different combina combinations that they have. Also, you can take a full day, but a full day for me it's kind of too much, too much for for um, for one day. Um, it's a for I would say like uh, 14 hours, 12 to 14 hours if you come from El Calafate all the way to Torres del Paine on a full day trip. It's probably too long, but a lot of passengers that are on a budget they use this kind of uh, of regular service to. Uh, disembark to you go from a hotel in El Calafate to a hotel in the, inside the national park because they you can use it as a transport uh, way. If you do it as a full day, the same as going uh, to Chalten on a full day for me it's kind of too much, too much. Uh, I always recommend to stay two or three nights in in Torres del Paine. Um, remember, we are crossing the border, so we need to do the passport control and. Um, let me go back to the map of uh, here where we do the passport control in Cerro Castillo. So coming from El Calafate, we go, to, we do the crossing here and we can either go to Puerto Natales, stay overnight in Puerto Natales or stay inside the National Park of Torres del Paine. There are different ways to access the, the, the Torres del Paine National Park. So two or three nights in the, no in, in the area if you stay in Puerto Natales, you can do a full day trip to um, Torres del Paine. This will be more um, affordable, more for budget op options. You have a lot of hotels in Puerto Natales. It's much cheaper to st than staying overnight inside the National Park. The hotels inside the National Park are expensive, are all inclusive. Most of them are in all inclusive. So, uh, and uh, you also have another possibility to enter the national park using the Glaciar Balmacea and Serrano that I will mention later. Um, so full day Torres del Paine is the typical visit that we do either from Puerto Natales all year round could be, it's a long, long day, 11 hours, visiting the Milodon Caves, Laguna Marca, the Lago Grey, the Paine Falls. So what we do is depart from Puerto Natales all the way we pass via Cerro Castillo and we enter through here, Laguna Marga, and we visit all the way up to here, up to Lago Grey, where we can have the possibility to do the navigation to see the gray, gray glacier that is an amazing experience. Yeah, there are other ways to access the National Park that are via, via this part that is the a second entrance that the National Park has. So it's like a circuit. There are different possibilities and combinations that you can do in the area. Another option, this is the Miladon Caves that I was mentioning. This is in Lago Grey that I was uh, telling you. And um, this is a, another way to enter the National Park the Valmas, using the Valmacea and Serrano, visiting the glacier, the Valmacea Glacier. So we, dis we take a boat from Puerto Natales, from Puerto Boris. We start navigating 
through this uh, fjord and we change the uh, we visit the glaciers we have lunch in in this host area and then we can either continue on this kind of uh, up and down river zodiacs so we can go or uh, enter the national park on this kind of excursion and transportation basis it's an amazing experience because it's a great view way to enter the national park on a with a great uh, through an access that nobody else uh, does is using a zodiac uh, like this and you enter to the national park by its zodiac so it's an, uh, these are all the different access that the national park has so i was mentioning the the one in the serrano then the the porteria laguna marga so uh, it's it's a huge national park and um, look at this for for an ending uh, the end of the uh, doing a long full day trekking and ending like this with a champagne glass. <laughs> this might be at Explorer. Well, and inside the National Park, we have great um, deluxe options like at the Explorer, Rio Serrano, the Lago Grey, Tierra, Awasi. Awasi is a top deluxe option that has their own private villas for each pass each couple and uh, with their own hot tub. And they, they put a, a private vehicle for each, ca for each um, uh, cabin, for each room. So you have a vehicle at disposal for you. So it's very upscale and uh, the same as Explorer. For me, Explorer has a great view on the, one of the best locations inside the National Park. The Awasi is located outside the National Park, but they enter to the National Park every day. And Explorer is right in the, with a great view to the horns the, of, of, Lago, of the Torre del Paine. Lago Grey also, they did a great renovation of the rooms. Of, view uh, with a great view of the lake Lago Grey and uh, in front of the glacier and Osteria La Torre, Lago Rio Serrano. There are many, many different uh, host areas. Osteria La Torre is right in the edge, in the base of the mountain of the big tower. So it's uh, the best location for, for reaching the, the full day to the base of the, of the mountain. Pampa Lodge is in Rio Serrano, Patagonia Camp, so I'm using like the glamping concept. Um, like staying in this yurt um, and it's an amazing experience too. They have their proper restaurant. And most of these uh, hotels are including these activities. So if you're staying in Las Torres in Lago Grey or in Explora or in Awasi, normally you visit these places that are the typical uh, must do in Torres del Paine. You have to do the base of Las Torres. The base of Las Torres is eight hours hiking, trekking. Uh, visiting the Valle Frances is another must do visiting the Lago Grey with the navigation to see the, the glacier of Lago Grey. Uh, and also very popular, very famous, the W or the O trekking. These are for people who are looking more adventure, staying overnight in little refuges. This is the, the W is the red, the red uh, line. So you stay one overnight in Refugio Grey, one overnight in Refugio Grande, one overnight in Refugio Los Tres. You visit the French Valley, and then you end up visiting, staying in near Las Torres, where, where the last um, refuge is located, and you'd visit the, the Mirador Las Torres from here. That's why it's called the W. Yeah, if you do the complete circuit of the of the massive, you being ending doing the O circuit. Now, uh, as I was mentioning, Torres del Paine to Puerto Natales, one hour distance, three hours more to get to Punta Arenas. Punta Arenas. It's a bigger city. They get daily flights from, from Santiago de Chile. And also is the starting point to um, this cruise to uh, combining to Argentina to Ushuaia. Next uh, webinar, Jime, we will be doing, uh, I think you put it on the, on the link. Yeah, we will be doing on the 11th of May a webinar about Ushuaia area and the end of the world and all that. And uh, so this will be a good way to access into that area from Punta Arenas all the way to Ushuaia. Yeah, so next, that will be our next stop. Uh, you remember to register. Uh, sorry, this is um, a map showing all the area of Argentina. Remember that we have, uh, we are in between very close to Argentina and to Chile. So we have been looking all these options of El Calafate, how to combine with this area of Torre del Paine. And in our next webinar is here, the, the end of the world here in Ushuaia. Here is Buenos Aires where we are talking, Jimena and I. Both are located here in Buenos Aires. So thank you very, very much. I don't want to take uh, much more time of your beautiful uh, time that we, and thank you, thank you for coming and, and enjoying this uh, webinar.
I'm not sure if there were questions. I, I think Kimin has been answering them. Um, uh, so thank you again for coming to this webinar and anything you need, you can contact us and we will like, uh, we will be happy to answer any, any other questions that you might have. I will end up with another very short video that we have of this area and uh, and this is uh, all for today. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Thank you.